Hi and welcome uh, to the second part of the uh, Introducing Workflow First video. Um, in this we're going to be adding some more workflow stages um, to the help desk demo app that we're creating. Okay, so right now we're in the workflow um, designer and we can see the enter ticket workflow stage that we just created uh, a few minutes ago. Um, now we're going to add in some new stages. Now the workflow designer uh, tree structure that we have here is actually a decision tree. Now what that means is that each stage of the workflow is actually a decision that needs to be made by the user. Um, so if they're on the enter ticket stage then the stages that are underneath that are going to be presented to the user as different options that they can choose. For each of those options we're going to be collecting information the same way that we collect the title and the details um, for the enter ticket stage and as it collects that information it'll be putting it into the record um, or into sub records underneath that. So that's really what workflow first uh, is all about is about going through decisions that need to be made by either a, a particular user or another user with a particular role and collecting information as it goes. Now we can also add in scripts and uh, conditions, uh, calculated fields and other um, business logic into the process as it's actually going through the workflow. Um, but this lets you create applications very quickly because as you're creating the workflow here you're also creating the data model because it's adding in the fields um, it's actually creating the fields as we're going along with the actions um, and the different login roles that you need to have. It's doing all that all in one um, all in one go as we're defining the workflow. Okay so we're going to go ahead and add in some more stages under this enter ticket um, stage. So to do that we just put our cursor over enter ticket and uh, we click on add option and that comes up with this form that lets us put in the substage information. Now for the substages under um, the uh, under the enter ticket stage, we're going to have three of them. We're going to have either refer to documentation, um, which lets uh, a customer service um, officer refer them to the existing documentation, maybe a URL um, or some page in the user guide. Um, the second stage is going to be to close the ticket, um, providing some resolution. And the third is going to be to escalate it. And in that case, it's going to be going up to uh, a technician where they can actually look into it, um, log some information, and then close it. So that's the basic structure of the workflow that we're going to be implementing here. And it's going to be very quick. Very, you know, if, if I was doing it without explaining it, I could do the whole thing in like a minute. Um, but I'm going to go a little slower so I can actually explain how it works as we're going. Okay, so the first is going to be um, refer to... Um, documentation. Now for the role here, the first stage we actually left this as blank and that means basically that anyone can actually um, enter the ticket. Uh, in this case we don't want anyone to be able to refer the user to, uh, to documentation, we just want um, whoever's going to be picking up the support, uh, the support call. In this case we're going to call it CSO, a customer service uh, officer. So we just type in the name of the role here. Um, when we submit this, it actually creates a role in a different area of the, uh, of the application. Um, we don't have to worry about that. We can just type it in or we can select it from the drop-down list. So when we're referring to the documentation, um, we're going to let them put that into, um, we're going to let them put that into a separate field called URL. Um, and also we're going to add, sorry, a resolution field where they can actually put in um, a few paragraphs of uh, text to explain whereabouts um, in that URL that they need to look. And that's it for that stage. So we click OK. Now we can see underneath our enter stage we have our additional, our additional option to refer to documentation. So we're going to add another option under enter ticket now. So we go back to enter ticket and click add option. And here um, we're going to want to give them the option of just closing it. Um, so we'll just call this closed ticket. Again, this is going to be CSO. Now, you notice I can click um, the drop-down list and just select CSO. I could also just type it in. And when we're closing the ticket, um, they're just going to be providing the resolution. Now, we already have a field called resolution, so we can just select it from existing fields here. It's easier. And that'll be that. 
And the last one that we wanted to add uh, this uh, for, for these options is going to be to escalate it. Um, and to escalate it, again, we want this to be the CSO. OK, and, um, and we're going to add a field called assigned to. Uh, notice that we can put spaces into the, the, the title of the field. Um, there's no limitations on that. It creates an internal kind of programming ID that it needs to use for scripting um, that won't have spaces in. But it does that automatically. You don't have to worry about that. You can just type in anything there. But try to keep the fields kind of short. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna run into problems with layout um, in the form and in the uh, in the list view, because the column is gonna be rather large. There are actually other ways to deal with that, where you can actually have two different titles, one which is shorter and one which is longer. We'll go into that uh, a little bit later, though. So the assigned to field is gonna be a little interesting because this is gonna be a link field. Now, by link, uh, I'm I mean it's actually gonna relate to another part of the database. So I'm going to click this drop down here and I'm going to select users because we want this actually to select from the list of users in the system. And just selecting link here will do that for us automatically. Um, so as well as assigning it to someone, we are going to want to add some notes that we can basically um, explain to that other person. So we'll add some notes here, we'll make that paragraph. Now, we're going to do something a little interesting here. We want the notes to be in a separate list because we want it to keep building up. Um, if the technician wants to add notes, we want that to go um, basically append to the end of a list of notes. We don't want it to be just one field which is overridden every time someone puts um, notes in. So we'll click on the other field settings here. Um, and we're going to enter into separate list tag here. And we're going to put... Um, we're going to put work log here. Now this is really kind of uh, an internal list um, that we're going to have. So it's going to be an internal list of notes, not necessarily something which we want to share with the, with the uh, end user, but of course they can see it. Um, but this tells it just to put it into a separate list underneath the record, not in the record itself. OK. So let's click OK on that. And now we can see we have our three options. Enter ticket, refer to documentation, close ticket, and escalate. Um, we can add some more in, um, but we're just going to publish right now to see what that looks like. So let's go to what's next, publish. We we'll click OK. Switch over to our demo app and refresh that. When it starts up, it actually makes all the changes to the database. Um, all behind the scenes, you don't get to see really any of that at all. Um, It'll, it'll change the table structures, you know, run all the different SQL commands. You just don't have to worry about them. Okay, so again, we see our ticket here, um, and it now has some additional fields in. These are the fields that we've added to potentially be collected, um, but we don't, you know, they don't have any values right now. But you can also see that uh, instantly now we have the options under our ticket to refer to documentation, to close a ticket, escalate, and so forth. Now, we see all of these, even though these are assigned to the CSO role, because we're logged in as admin. By default, um, it'll log you in as admin. What you need to do is actually create some uh, users who are not set as admin. Um, I can click on the user tab here and click on new user, and you'll see, and you'll see that there. If you add these users here, um, as, you're, as you're adding them, you can click the plus roles here and select CSO to say that they are going to be a CSO. You can add multiple roles if they have different roles in the company. When you log in as that user, then you will be able to see it, or if they're not a CSO role, they won't be able to see it. Um, and, of course, you know you should make the application not allow, um, not allow it to go straight in as admin without having to type in a password. And you do that in the configuration tab. Um, let me just click OK here. When you when you create the configuration record, you want to specify requires login as yes. And that will actually make it ask for a login instead of just logging you in automatically as admin or as a guest user if you have a guest account on here. OK, let's just click OK on that for now. So let's go back to our ticket and uh, we'll just see how this works as an admin. It's kind of useful being able to see these as admin because I can show them to you without having to constantly log out and log in as different users. 
So in this case, I'm going to say, um, uh, let's, let's see what I can do. Refer to documentation. And I can put in some here, some user guide.com. Oops, spelled that wrong. Some user guide.com. Um, please refer to page 88 in the user guide PDF file on that website. And there you go, then you click OK. And that instantly transfers the information from the form into this record um, so that it says it has this URL here, which is actually a, a hyperlink that you can click on, and the resolution text that we just put in. And you notice there are no more buttons now because the workflow is finished. That's the end of the workflow as far as it knows anyway. Okay, um, so let's go back and we'll just add in um, one more thing we want to do here, I think, uh, under Escalate. Uh, we actually want to have the option, um, let's see what we want to do. We want to add an option of logging some work, um, which is what the technician is going to do, um, or to actually allow them to resolve it. So we're going we're gonna to do both options here. So let's put here and say work in progress. And this is going to be something that the tech role is going to do, the technician. So let's click input field, and we're going to want to reuse that um, work log field that we entered in earlier. So you see we have work log here. We want to actually drill down this work log. Remember, it's like the, this is a hierarchical database, so this is like folders. You can click the plus right there and just select notes, and that will actually um, add to that notes list that we talked about earlier. Now you can see the structure of the workflow has changed a little bit because now we have an option underneath Escalate called work in progress. Let's add one more option here. Actually, sorry, I actually missed something out here. So this is a good this is a good uh, opportunity for me to show you how to um, edit workflow once you've created it. The there are three buttons here. One is to edit. One is to select the input fields, and the other is to edit a script, um, which runs at the time that that workflow stage is executed. We just want to edit the stage in this case, so we'll click edit. This takes you back to the same form that we basically saw when we were entering things in click on other settings. Um, we want this to go back after they've done a work in progress. We want to go back to the escalate stage. So to do that we just click on the um, then run this stage and we want to drill down through the stages through enter ticket um, to escalate. So it goes back to that stage when it's done and click OK. Now that's going to change the um, going to change the workflow um, so that now we have a little arrow that says um, escalate which basically tells it that once you've gone to this stage after that stage it's going to go back to escalate again and it will, it will give you the option of repeating doing that work in progress over and over again if you want to okay um, and we're going to end we're going to end with one last uh, option here to um, to resolve it now again, this is going to be something that the tech does. And they're just going to select, uh, enter something into the resolution field. And, uh, and that'll be that. So that's the end of our workflow. Um, very simple workflow. Um, we're going to publish it again. Even though it's a simple workflow, it's actually a full help desk application, really. Um, it allows you to do a lot of uh, what other help desk applications do. And we were able to put this together you know, very, very quickly. So if I click, um, if we go back and enter a, a new ticket here, we'll, we'll get to see um, our new workflow. We'll be doing that in the, uh, the next video where we'll just explain a little bit more about how it all works.